Yo, 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 good morning. Grateful for another maggot-free day above the dirt, Jersey Shore. Check it out. An amazing, peaceful, quiet, tranquil morning. One of uh, equanimity. So this video is about spiritual bypassing, and it comes based on the... uh, suggestion of my friend in Germany, Raul uh, Festante, um, who asked me to speak on it. And he made me realize I never had done a video, a video or a talk solely on spiritual bypassing lately. Um, basically, all I've done is mentioned it in a lot of other contexts and a lot of other videos. And if I didn't use the terminology, I, I'm always speaking about it because whenever you talk about pursuing and avoiding aversion, um, disassociation, you're talking about bypassing. So spiritual bypassing is using spiritual practice to do the bypassing. There's many other ways to bypass, obviously. Um, but spiritual bypassing is easy to fall into and it's difficult to recognize. Um, and I'll get into that um, Well, I'll get into it now. Mainly, um, people who fall into the trap of spiritual bypassing as their complete spiritual practice um, struggle immensely because they never really were in a legit spiritual practice to begin with. And I'm not, not, you know, being uh, harsh. It happens. Um, But... Spiritual bypassing is something we all do at times, once we're in practice. But what really makes the difference, again, like everything else, is intention. Um, So spiritual bypassing is much different than, let's say, acting as if. So if I have, you know, a solid spiritual practice, and the proof of that is in my experience. So remember, the Buddha said, don't take his word for it. Find your own way, carve your own path, uh, decide what teachings work for you, um, walk away from teachings that, that no longer work for you, and base this on your own direct experience. So spiritual bypassing is a way of not having direct experience, um, but with the right intention could be a way that we're acting as if that leads us back to direct experience because our tension, our intention is to engage, is to work with, um, is to have the direct experience of, of the present moment. So that's the difference. Um, uh, an example would be love and attachment, like the near enemies. Love and attachment can seem exactly the same, but what makes them different is love we take, excuse me, love is giving, attachment is taking. So while it might feel the same, the motives and the intentions different. Same thing with bypassing. Um, Using spiritual practice to divert our attention back to something healthy and wholesome and get us back on the right track um, is acting as if, and it's, it's, it's actually a part of practice, right? We, we have to redirect our minds And what better way to do it than with something positive and healthy? The problem is that's not the intention and motive when we're bypassing or when somebody's consumed with bypassing as their practice because they're trying to get out. They're trying to avoid. They're turning away from. They're running away from. They're creating. And it becomes a sense pleasure pursuit, right? Uh, Bypassing is, is aversion, but it's also pursuit. It's aversion from the real issue of the direct experience we're we're avoiding, but it's a pursuit of sense, pleasure, and good feeling to uh, not feel what that experience would have us feel. And that is how we escape, avoid, and hide from reality rather than ground ourselves in it. So how does spiritual bypassing take form? Um, again, understanding that it's the intention and motive behind it, spiritual bypassing takes a lot of forms. It could be um, sitting in meditation to avoid feeling what we'd feel if we uh, walked into the other room and had to deal with our spouse. 
Um, spiritual bypassing can be partaking in ritual um, to avoid engaging um, something in the real time that we don't want to deal with. It could be running to the meditation center or the temple instead of being home caring for our family and dealing with maybe some dysfunction that's going on there. It can be going out and doing huge gestures of generosity and charity for people you barely know when you're not taking care of yourself or your family. It could be coming to spiritual practice from something, from pain and trauma, and very quickly becoming uh, the person that helps everybody and tells everybody um, how to heal when they've never healed themselves. And we see that a lot, right? People go from this horrific dysfunctional life to suddenly being, um, getting some kind of weekend certification and suddenly they're teachers. Um, suddenly they want to become monks and uh, suddenly they want to go to this extreme spiritual uh, persona that is founded and grounded on not doing the work and having the experience to really earn it, but to, to just skip over all the work, not do it, and get good feeling from outside ourselves, from helping people, serving people, um, and getting that validation and that ego um, gratification, right? So I'm not saying serving people, helping people, and generosity and, and, and charity are bad things, but they are. They're unhealthy when they're done with the wrong reason, for the wrong reasons. Um, we see um, spiritual bypassing manifest in, in knowing every single little thing about sacred literature and memorizing, I, you know, knowing the, the Dhammapada back and forth, knowing the Gita, um, knowing all this, these spiritual teachings verbatim, knowing every single name and every single story and almost taking pride in that at the expense of doing anything with it in terms of transformation and um, liberation in daily life, in daily practice, in uh, our direct experience. Now, the problem is that only I can determine if I'm doing this. Only you could determine if you're doing this. And it takes a rigorous, rigorous honesty and a clear seeing of our own intentions and our own motivations. And, um, you know, that's where we, ha where we have to um, realize that, you know, we could be acting out our own delusion. And here's the tricky part. Enlightenment begins in delusion, right? Um, wanting to get out of delusion is why we pursue enlightenment and spiritual practice. But delusion's devious because delusion convinces us we're not deluded, right? And it's, it's really easy to believe it because, hey, I'm doing all these spiritual things. I'm definitely a different person maybe than I was, at least on the outside, not doing some of the horrific shit I used to do. But inside, I'm, I'm still emotionally um, the same. And, you know, the pursuing aspect is the more I bypass, the more the trauma intensifies that, and the, the hurt and the pain intensifies that, just like a drug, I have to pursue spirituality harder to keep the, sustain the experience, to create it and sustain it, and to push back um, what is now growing stronger. So that's the uh, sad irony. The more I spiritual bypass, the worse what I'm bypassing gets. No different than in any other addiction. So um, I hope this was helpful. And uh, I, 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 I hope you realize that um, it's through um, each of our own subjective assessments that, that we identify these things. Um, yes, we can bounce it off uh, people we respect spiritually, but ultimately we have to get to a point where we're honest enough to need to seek someone's, right? To need to seek someone's opinion. Um, 
So some of the things I mentioned are pretty good red flags. Um, and uh, that's all. So thanks, Raul. Appreciate your suggestion. And uh, have a great maggot-free day above the dirt. Peace out.